This webinar is the first in a series of webinars on RAPIDS, an open source ecosystem NVIDIA has developed to GPU accelerate machine learning. Getting started with RAPIDS is easy. Before we begin, we'll need access to a GPU and an environment set up to use RAPIDS. Here, I've allocated myself a DGX2 using an SSH terminal. This system is an incredibly powerful supercomputer containing 16 GPUs, each a Tesla V100 with 32 gigabytes of GPU memory. Next, we need to create an environment in which we can run RAPIDS. We can build this environment from scratch, or we can pull down a previously built environment using Docker and the NVIDIA GPU cloud. The last thing we'll do after building an environment is to start a Jupyter Notebook session that we can interact with via an internet browser. We'll be walking through a notebook that provides an introduction to RAPIDS. This notebook can be found in the Notebooks Extended GitHub repository. You can find the link to this Jupyter Notebook and the instructions to build and run this environment in the description of this video. Let's start to walk through the notebook. First, let's check our setup. The NVIDIA SMI command shows that we're working with a DGX2 with 16 V100s. We can also check the CUDA version. We see from the output that we're using CUDA 10.0. There exist many tools in the Python ecosystem for working with structured tabular data, but few are as widely used as Pandas. Pandas represents data in a table and enables data scientists to easily manipulate the data. With Pandas, data scientists can perform a number of useful operations such as filtering, transforming, aggregating, merging, visualizing, and many more. Here, we show how to create a Pandas data frame, an internal object for representing tabular data. We can perform many operations on this data. For example, let's say that we wanted to sum all the values in the value column. We could accomplish this using the highlighted syntax. Pandas is fantastic for working with small data sets that fit into your system's memory and don't need more computing power than your CPUs can provide. However, data sets are growing larger and data scientists are working with increasingly complex workloads. The need for accelerated compute arises. QDF is a package within the RAPIDS ecosystem that allows data scientists to easily migrate their existing Pandas workflows from CPU to GPU where computations can leverage the immense parallelization that GPUs provide. Here, we show how to create a QDF data frame. As before, we can take this QDF data frame and perform a sum operation over the value column. The key difference is that any operations we perform using QDF will use the GPU instead of the CPU. Notice how the syntax for both creating and manipulating a QDF data frame is identical to the syntax necessary to create and manipulate Pandas data frames. The QDF API is based on the Pandas API. This design choice minimizes the cognitive burden of switching from a CPU-based workflow to a GPU-based workflow and allows data scientists to focus on solving problems while benefiting from the speed of a GPU. After our data has been pre-processed, we often want to build a model so as to understand the relationships between different variables in the data. Scikit-learn is an incredibly powerful toolkit that allows data scientists to quickly build models from their data. Below, we show a simple example of how to create a linear regression model. First, we create new data using the relationship y equals 2 times x plus 1. Then, we add a bit of noise. We can visualize this data using the matplotlib library. Next, we can create a linear regression model using Scikit-learn and fit that model to the empirical data points. We can also use the same model to generate new predictions and overlay the predictions over the empirical data points. We see the model's estimated relationship is identical to the true relationship y equals 2 times x plus 1. The mathematical operations underlying many machine learning algorithms are often matrix multiplications. These types of operations are highly parallelizable and can be greatly accelerated using a GPU. QML makes it easy to build machine learning models in an accelerated fashion while still using an interface nearly identical to scikit-learn. The below shows how to accomplish the same linear regression model but on a GPU. First, we convert our NumPy arrays to a QDF representation. Next, we instantiate a linear regression model from QML and fit it to our data. 
Lastly, we can use this same GPU accelerated model to generate predictions for new data points. Using matplotlib, we can overlay the empirical data points, the true relationship y equals 2 times x plus 1, the estimated relationship using the CPU-based scikit-learn model, and the estimated relationship using the GPU accelerated QML model. We see our estimated relationships for both CPU and GPU are identical to the true relationship. However, we're able to take advantage of the GPU using QML to speed up our operations and more quickly fit models to bigger datasets. Dask is a library that facilitates distributed computing. Written in Python, it allows one to compose complex workflows using basic Python primitives like integers or strings, as well as large data structures like those found in NumPy, Pandas, and QDF. In the below example, and in subsequent webinars, we'll show how to use DAS with QDF to accelerate common ETL tasks and train machine learning models like linear regression and XGBoost. DASK operates by creating a cluster composed of a client and multiple workers. The client is responsible for scheduling work. The workers are responsible for actually executing that work. Typically, we set the number of workers to be equal to the number of computing resources we have available to us. For CPU-based workflows, this might be the number of cores or threads on that particular machine. For example, we might set n underscore workers equal to 8 if we have 8 CPU cores or threads on our machine that can each operate in parallel. This allows us to take advantage of all of our computing resources and enjoy the most benefits from parallelization. To get started, we'll create a local cluster of workers and a client to interact with that cluster. We can inspect the client object to view our current DASK status. We should see the IP address for our scheduler, as well as the number of workers in our cluster. You can also see the status and more information at the dashboard found at your IP address slash status. You can ignore this for now. We'll dive deeper into this in subsequent webinars. With our client and cluster of workers set up, it's time to execute our first distributed program. We'll define a function called sleep underscore one that sleeps for one second and returns the string success. Executed in serial four times, this function should take around four seconds to execute. As expected, our workflow takes about four seconds to run. Now, let's execute the same workflow in distributed fashion using Dask. We'll first import a function called delayed from dask.delayed. This function will delay any functions called and allow us to build a graph of tasks for DAS to execute. Next, we'll wrap the sleep underscore one function using the delayed function and call the sleep underscore one function for each of our four workers. Note that no computations have taken place yet. We have delayed those executions. We'll use our client to compute the results of the sleep underscore one operations. DAS will now execute the computations using each worker. We can collect our results using the client's gather method and print them to the screen. We see from the output that each function call was a success. Additionally, we see the whole workflow took a little over a second. Each worker is truly executing in parallel. In the previous example, we saw how we can use Dask with very basic objects to compose a graph that can be executed in a distributed fashion. However, we aren't limited to basic data types though. We can use DAS with objects such as pandas data frames, numpy arrays, and QDF data frames to compose more complex workflows. With larger amounts of data and embarrassingly parallel algorithms, DAS allows us to scale ETL and machine learning workflows to gigabytes or terabytes of data. In the below example, we show how we can process 100 million rows by combining QDF with DAS. Before we start working with QDF data frames with DAS, we need to set up a local CUDA cluster and a client to work with our GPUs. This is very similar to how we set up a local cluster and a client in vanilla Dask. With our clients and workers set up, let's create our first distributed CUDF data frame using Dask. We'll instantiate our CUDF data frame in the same manner as in the previous sections, but instead we'll use significantly more data. Lastly, we'll pass the CUDF data frame to dask underscore qdf dot from underscore qdf 
and create an object of type dask underscore qdf dot core dot data frame. The highlighted output shows the first several rows of our distributed QDF data frame. With our DAS QDF data frame defined, we can now perform the same sum operation as we did with our QDF data frame. The key difference is that this operation is now distributed, meaning we can perform this operation using multiple GPUs or even multiple nodes, each of which may have multiple GPUs. This allows us to scale to larger and larger amounts of data. In this webinar, we showed at a high level what each of the packages in the Rapids ecosystem are, as well as what they do. For more information on Rapids, be sure to check out the additional links in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.